one day a year I liked going to church. In late summer, we retreat to an outdoor sanctuary, the woods behind First Congregational. Two men build fires, spear whole salmon, roast them over coals, coastal native style. Families offer bread and jello, cake and potato salad. Before the meal, kids grow wings on their keds, scatter down dirt paths. Some leap like stags through brush. We all ignore warnings to keep our clothing dry and hurtle into the creek. We are lords of crash and splash, skinned knees and palms, seekers of periwinkles among pebbles. Aside from the feast, no one in church talks about the Kalapuya. Later, I learn from a stone plaque they named Mary's River and Valley Chepinefu, place of the elderberry. We clamber to picnic tables. Christ fishes swim with Pacific salmon as church kids and I down cup after Dixie cup of red Kool-Aid, our first my last communion. Kangaroo. This one starts with an epigraph, an excerpt from a letter from Emily Dickinson to Thomas Higginson, dated July 1862. Perhaps you smile at me. I could not stop for that. My business is circumference, an ignorance not of customs, but if caught with the dawn or the sunset see me, myself the only kangaroo among the beauty, sir, if you please, it afflicts me, and I thought that instruction would take it away. For so many years, I thought I could spend my entire life hiding in shadows, afraid to mingle with azaleas. But as I shunned the sun and pretended no one saw my gigantic feet and nose, I avoided joys as well as failures. Of course it's dangerous in the open, roaming without cover on savannas where nimrods with their rifles can take aim. I hunger for greener grass and loping freely. Though fairy wrens and even minas have plumage that could make me hide in shame, I am poised to hop over boundaries. I'd rather be the only kangaroo than just another beauty. <laughs>